Welcome to a brand new edition of the Not So Intellectual Podcast. It's been a while. I need to take a little break after <laughs> after this shitty back end of 2016. But we are back. And um, we're going to be tackling some interesting headlines today. Um, unfortunate headline first is uh, the ghost ship fire that happened in Oakland. Um, yeah. Yeah, that- so it is a tragedy. It's not just a fire. Thirty six people died. Yeah. And it's like I keep seeing people post about it online. Facebook and they're like, Oh, these there's this argument of like, oh, these people were living in poverty because of capitalism and it's like, yes, people being priced out of most of San Francisco and it's extended in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Yes. But that does not change the responsibility, your anyone's responsibility for making sure that where they decide to reside is safe. And I saw an article or a write up or whatever blog post you want to call it where this woman used this incident to try to advocate for grants for the arts. As though grants would just magically make fire hazards and drug use and irresponsibility and not giving a fuck about human safety disappear. Mm -hmm. Like that's, and it's just, there's this behavior that's been going on for a long time and people make fun of it and they blame it on millennials, but it's just in general, it's a general behavior of people. But there's a large number of people who are, I guess, in their early 30s to late 20s. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll say mid 20s. Mid 20s to early 30s, where they still have this fucking rose colored glasses on. So it's like they know reality exists. They understand the context of things that are going on, but they still refuse to see the full spectrum of how it's happening. And it, it's, it happened with the election. Mm-hmm. These are some of the same people that went Bernie or bust when Bernie was no longer the candidate, instead of thinking like, okay, well, we need to avoid all this shit. We need to change our mood, our actions and all this stuff. And we need to do it like this. So it's just like this refusal, like there's expectation for the system to serve them, but a refusal to develop systems for them to function in. Yeah. And then developing their own, like, yeah, it's like society. there's no, they're not building foundations for things. They're just taking, they're basically doing what squatters do. They're like squatting in life. Mm. Not everyone, but there are people who are doing this. And it's like, well, at least m- their mentality is like that. They're like, I oh, feel like maybe it's, it has a lot to do with maybe how the economy is and how it's really hard to be able to have certain things, certain amenities, or necessities, I should say, human necessities. I mean, like, I was homeless, and the reason I was homeless wasn't because I got pushed out of my home. I wasn't able to afford a place to live, but while I was, it wasn't a thing of me walking around telling people, oh, because of the economy my individual situation happened or because of capitalism yes it's fucked up that people are pricing people out of places but an argument i guess a disagreement a disagreement Mm -hmm. between me and someone i was online with that i know from college decided to bring up she brought up that she's gone into spaces that were like how ghost ship was described and thought to herself this could be unsafe but then allowed herself to be swooned by the romantic idea of having a space to perform in or do her art in she allowed that to blind herself to the fact that she could die in there Like, I've worked at places where the roof didn't look right. And I'm like, I just stuck it out for the time. And then after a while, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Because I don't want to fucking die in the space. Mm -hmm. And, or die because I was working here. 
Like, I took a job before where the woman who worked in my place before died of lung cancer, I believe. Mm. The guy who ran the place chain smoked. I couldn't do it. I had to leave. It was, you know, it's just like, aside from that, there's always other issues. But that wasn't the main reason why I left. But they definitely added to it. Because, like, what do I look like if I refuse to date and live with someone who smokes cigarettes on a regular basis? Why would I work there when that's the second place that I spend the most time of my life. It's ridiculous. So I've been having this conflict in my mind about whether or not if I feel it, well, at least I'm having this conflict because I feel like people are asking me to overlook the responsibility we all have as adults to speak up and take action when things are wrong and just be sad about it. And this is like, yes, it's sad. I'm more angry than anything because the idea of ghost ship was something I wanted to do, which was have a living workspace in a warehouse and have an artist collective there. But they were going to be a collective of artists who understood that there are bills to pay and there are regulations that we have to cover and we have to do things right. We can't just build a structure within a structure and expect it to just be okay and then throw a party there and not follow any type of idea of Mm -hmm. any safety regulations. And this place, like someone described it as a tinderbox. Why would you allow, why would you not say something to your friend who lives somewhere like that? Because they're probably drinking the same Kool-Aid. It's just like, so you could, so Mm post-tragedy, you can call the space that your friend lived in a tinderbox. But before... You didn't say, hey, I'm really afraid that you live in a space that you could die in. Like, it didn't cross your mind. Like, nobody said Well, maybe they did, and they fucking just, it fell on deaf ears, you know? You know, and it's like, I understand that because we've all been there. We've all lost someone to something, whether it be, you know, poor health because they choose to eat poorly or they're doing drugs or alcoholism, drunk driving. Like, everybody's lost somebody because of basically their own irresponsibility. Mm -hmm. Like, one of my close... One of my family members that I felt closest to died from an aneurysm. And it's... We kind of believe that even though it's a spontaneous Mm -hmm. condition, I guess you can say, that happens, it's something that was brought on by her chain-smoking and drinking all the time. She was an alcoholic and chain smoker. What do you expect is going to happen to your body? It's going to conk out on you. And sometimes it's tragic like that, and sometimes it's slow and painful. In a way, she's lucky that she went quickly Mm -hmm. instead of dying slowly from lung cancer or Mm -hmm. whatever. But, you know, it's just that thing of, like, if people can look at someone and say, it's really sad that such and such died from drug use, but they should have gotten help mm. or they wouldn't get help. And you're sad for them. But at the same time, when you have a friend that lives somewhere and they insist upon living somewhere that isn't exactly the best for them, have you ever suggested, hey, come live with me? Mm. You know, and then it's just like the idea that they were poor artists. The concept of a poor artist, like, we've always grown up with the idea of starving artists. So, at what point do you say, okay, well, let me take some authority over my life? Why why do you have, why in order for you to be an artist, do you have to be full-time artist? Mm -hmm. Why can't you be an artist with a side job that helps you... Be a responsible artist. (laughs) ...take up your bills, you know, or helps you take care of yourself? And then I read this... I feel like sometimes, like, they have, people like that have certain mentalities where, like, they can't cope with a regular lifestyle. Or not a regular lifestyle, but a, a lifestyle that they would have to have in order to be able to do their art. There's, like... Well, I mean, I have I have issues with, like, it, it stunts my creativity or even my will, my motivation mm-hmm. to do the work that I that I want to do if I'm forced to do work I don't want to do but at the same time everybody pays their dues in some way and there's always somewhere to get some type of income and if and I've gone to art shows where I'm like how did you even get to be a part of this Mm -hmm. 
And they're, and everybody kind of was looking at the work like, what the fuck is this? And I've been to our shows where we're like, why haven't you gotten more support? Mm-hmm. I think we've... Or at least all, people who are interested in that type of thing have seen that. Yeah, Yeah, we've all been there. Like, anybody who gives it a chance and actually involves themselves in these communities sees someone who's, like, who deserves recognition. And we see people who should not be getting any type of attention or spotlight getting all the recognition. And it's, a, and it's always about who you know. Like, we all know this. If you're an artist, if you're truly an artist, you know that. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're an adult, if you're if you're out of college and you're function and you're a functioning artist, you know it's about who you know because those people can give you opportunities because those people can get money. But the idea, I like I used to there used to be art grants and I tried you know by the time that I got out of college and everything it wasn't really a thing anymore. Mm-hmm. But I, I dealt with it and I just was like okay well I have to get a job, and I did my work on the side and. You know, eventually I was like, okay, well, I'm ready to do this full time. Mm -hmm. So, no, I can't do um, my work like I want to, but I still do work and I still get paid for the work I do. When I do contract work or whatever it is, cosplay, commissions, any of that stuff. So, it, it just bugs me that the, it bugs me the idea, like, because I don't know. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it, it drives me crazy that I can't find out, like, really what it is. Because I want to be understanding, but at the same time, I've seen people just refuse to do life like mm-hmm. an adult because they want it their way. Babies got to have it. And it's just like, I, you got, you know, you got responsibilities and everything. And it's just like, if you if nobody's going to support you and you have to support yourself and then you refuse to even try to do that is it anyone's fault if you fall into ruin other than your own Mm. and it's not that you weren't capable like there are plenty of people who are functioning um manic depressive there are people who are functioning depressive depressed there are people with psychological disorders there are people with Asperger's with full time jobs like there's yeah. all kinds of people who do who do it every day and nobody's asking you to go work at Burger King or whatever mm-hmm. some fat nobody's asking you to flip burgers or have people spit in your face for bullshit but if you don't have any other skills other than painting mm-hmm. and nobody wants to pay you to paint you gotta find something to do that people will pay you for and if You cannot afford to live somewhere where you can't pay rent to have your own space. Then you have to find somewhere where you can reside for a price cheaper. Mm -hmm. But there are situations that you can live in other than living in a death trap. You know, it's just, I, I don't, I refuse to believe it. Maybe it's because I've been fortunate enough to have people in my corner, but it's just like, I lived in a space where it was like, ugh, this is gross and potentially dangerous but it wasn't because the roof might crash on me and it wasn't because the building might burn down well mm-hmm. i don't know because it was an apartment complex and you could any any time yeah, you rent an any apartment mm-hmm. you could live next door to a fucking meth lab you don't know who's next door to you or beneath you yeah. or above you you don't know until you go over there so with all of that aside it was just the people inside of the apartment that I was like, oh, this could go wrong at any time. Mm. And fortunate, like I said, fortunately, I had someone who cared enough to say, hey, you can stay here mm-hmm. instead. But what I did was I stayed there and eventually I started paying rent. And when I wasn't paying rent, I still helped out. I still made myself. I I created a... I Well, not created, but I let them know that I appreciated the space that I was in. And then I did what I could to help out. Even if I didn't have money to give for whatever that thing was, I actually physically did something. And it's just like, there's a pot, you can possibly, there, the possibility to be able to function in a situation without having to pay rent exists mm-hmm. beyond you being someone's sugar baby or prostitute. What have you, yeah. <laughs> whatever have you. Like, you can do that. But you have to... 
you have to look for it and you have to be open with people and you have to be willing to potentially go somewhere where it may not be comfortable but from from the argument that other people are putting forth is they're making it seem like these people were forced into the situation as if they were squatters they weren't squatters it was published it was either pub yeah it was published that the space that ghost ship was functioning in people the total amount of money that was being paid was about twenty thousand dollars a month Shit. Now, if you can't afford a place to live, and the space costs twenty thousand dollars a month, and you're paying money to sleep on the floor in a mat with a mattress, or whatever it is, question your, like, I got questions for you. Like, yeah. what are you doing? You couldn't get a one bedroom with a friend and split it down the middle and pay five hundred. I think it's having that sense of community. Like, you building yeah, your own. Yeah, it's nice. It's, yeah. it's a nice thing. And then somebody made an argument. Like, with because, like-minded people, you know. Yeah. Well, where you're you able to that's why you get a roommate with a like mind. And then you can live somewhere where there's a fucking sprinkler and a ceiling. So if you have a kitchen fire, you don't die from an explosion right away. Or you could at least have a potential chance of getting out. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, it's just like, I... And I was called, like, the the person I was going back and forth with that posted that article made the comment pointing to me saying that I was being insensitive because there are people who are mourning the death. And I asked her, is it not insensitive that this woman is using this platform to advocate for something completely unrelated to the situation? Exactly. And people... People, like, in, like right off the bat, as soon as the story broke, people were saying, like, oh, it's because of capitalism. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's because of capitalism that a dude decided. So, yeah, it is. It is not. That's not just capitalism. That was opportunistic, and it was predatory, and it was fucked up what he did, which was he rented out space to people, charged them money, probably got profit from that, yeah, and didn't make the space safe. And allow them to build things in there, and allow them to store things in there that were not proper. There were, there were. There's a list of complaints on that building. The building has been cited for all types of issues, but people continue to live there. And it's just like, as an artist, as a young person who has always wanted to be an artist and who is currently functioning as one, I don't believe that it is appropriate. Hmm. For you to throw caution to the wind and just go into a situation like that. There are other places to live. The Bay Area is not the place you need to be if you don't have money to live there. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with living in Los Angeles. We don't live in the heart of L.A. We don't live in downtown Los Angeles and we don't live in Santa Monica because it's fucking expensive. Yeah, it's fucking outrageous. We don't live in Hollywood because it's fucking expensive. But even out here, it's getting fucking expensive. Yeah. That's why people are fighting for the $15. But yeah. even then, they'll probably raise up the fucking prices of Yeah, I, I've been afraid that that's what's going to happen. They raise the minimum wage and then they just raise yeah. the cost of living. But looking at how the idealistic behavior of people like the ones that I've been going back and that I was going back and forth with. And the people who are the people who are shouting, oh, it's capitalism, it's capitalism. It's just like you have to have a job. You don't have to work at a corporate place. You right. don't have to work at a store. But you have to have a job. Even in the society even in society before modern technology and before the industrial revolution, you had to have a job. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have a job, it was because you were living under somebody else's roof. Women, before they were allowed to work, were only allowed to live if they followed the rules. So it's just like you either get to be somebody's bitch mm -mm. or you take care of yourself. Like, it's it's always been like that. But for some reason, there's this idealistic behavior. And it's not a generation because it's some people have been doing it since forever. There's always been people. It's just more of them now. And they're louder because of the Internet. Mm -hmm. Where they think that it's okay that you don't make your own money there'll be people who will give you money for bullshit that you make. And there's a lot of bullshit art. And I feel like yeah. <laughs> going being the product of an art school, I've seen plenty of bullshit art 
and they mad as hell when nobody when when it's time for the group critique they're fucking pissed because nobody liked their shit and it's like because it's un it, it sucks mm-hmm. we don't like it and somebody made a comment in the thread about on that article saying basically like you want an artist community that's fine but the community at large outside of your artist collective is are the people that you want supporting you so if you don't create work that they want to consume they will not give you money Mm -hmm. they're not going to buy it so you can either change your behavior to suit the environment around you or you can starve to death Mm. it's the same thing with having friends if you want friends you change your behavior to make it suitable for the type of people you want to be around. Like, I can't be brutally honest with every person I know because that hurts people's feelings. Yes. So I have to change that behavior so I can have friends. Now, I'm not being fake. I just change up my approach. So if I need to tell my friend about themselves, some people I need to sit down in private and I need to change my tone and I need to lay it out to them Mm -hmm. in a way that they're willing to hear. I can't go, bitch, you need to get your shit together because, <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that. So yeah. it's just, it's, you know, it's just one of those things where it's just like we, that as a social creature, you have a responsibility to socialize. And if you want to be antisocial, you're going to be alone. And if you're alone, mm. when shit goes down, you're going to, you're going to fall into ruin. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like, and it's also a thing of, the idea that just because someone else is an artist too, that they're gonna look out for you is bullshit. Yeah, really. I've seen I've seen more sabotage and more backstabbing and more fucked up stuff from people who call themselves artists than people who are just like a regular Joe who just screws in planks, mm-hmm. you know, for a living or works on roofs or the guy or the janitor, like. People are horrible sometimes, and sometimes those horrible people call themselves artists. Sometimes they're really good artists. Yeah. Sometimes they come up with amazing work, and you can't believe that that came out of that person. You can't believe that much viscous, vile, that viscous, vile cum stain created such an amazing song mm-hmm. or an amazing mm-hmm. gown or whatever it is. Yeah. Like I was in when I was in college, this guy he was really good at his work and one day somebody just decided I don't fucking like him so they defaced his um he had this beautiful like two piece dress on a mannequin someone came in and defaced it they vandalized his work why would they do that who did it and we never found out I think they found out who it was but like I didn't know but it wasn't for me to find out. But it's just that thing of like, why would somebody do something like that? They were jealous. Yeah. I mean, that's a, I have a feeling that happens a lot in that type of it does. industry. Everyone, I think. Oh, yeah. I think that's just the human nature for some people. Some people just, they having, can't fathom someone else succeeding having, over them. Having something they don't like. Or have. competition. Yeah. Yeah, they don't like competition. So it's just like either you compete, either you get better so you can compete. Or he's sabotage. Yeah. That time it was sabotage. And it's fucked up. But people do that. And, you know, it's just like... I guess, like, my bottom line with that issue is... If you if you don't want to participate in the community, the community will not participate with you in your, in your work. And that's what... As an artist, you need people to buy your work. I mean, when I'm running my shop... Like, I I still have merchandise that uh, we could say is kind of antiquated in a way because it's not as trendy as it used to be. But I want to get it out. I want to sell it because I bought the fur and I'm going to make the thing, right? Mm -hmm. So the pieces, like the hats, if people aren't feeling the hats, I just won't buy any more fur to make hats. But the hats I do have, if people aren't interested in the hats at the price that I'm trying to sell them at, I lower it Mm -hmm. because I'd rather sell it for something than to just hold on to fucking hats. Do you know who Sean King is? Sean King. Mm -hmm. Can you turn it around? I think I've heard that name. uh, He's an activist. He always posts up um, 
articles. Oh, yeah, from Facebook. Yeah. I've seen, like, <clears throat> silly stuff from this person. He's, um, uh, he does a lot of stuff. Um, I think he does a pretty good job of revealing a couple of things that the media doesn't necessarily shine a yeah, he can, I haven't, like I said, I haven't really seen him. Oh, no, I take it back. I saw him post, like, one thing that was pretty good. And, um, he posted this today, six hours ago. Apparently, this firefighter of the year, I'll put the description, I'll put the link in the description, um, went crazy in an Applebee's and pointed a gun at a black family while they were there. And, um, he was charged with multiple crimes, and then the prosecutors dropped the charges. I wonder why. I wonder why. It wasn't just because he's white, because if he was, like, but this clearly say, he like, has some type of backing with someone who's got some type of pull, like, somebody did him a favor. And, yeah, yeah it's partially because he's white, but also, like, you know, the whole, like, oh, we proved. He's a brother because he's a firefighter. Yeah. Fuck that motherfucker. Yeah. Burn his ass. Don't burn him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I I personally do not have any respect for the life of someone who has no respect for other lives. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you want to point guns at people? Why? Why are you so angry? I. That's something I'm, I'm. I don't understand. Why are white people so angry right now? When at the least person those you wanted, white people that are fucking super racist. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. I you, feel like they get. They feel like they can finally let this fear or whatever the fuck it is, just run wild now because they have their boy in the fucking, in the seat, in the hot seat now. Yeah, but I, it's just like, but why are you and so they angry? Think, <laughs> uh, they think. That they can just do it. I feel like they... I think that they can just do it now. Yeah. Because they're afraid or whatever the fuck they're thinking. And then where did the fear of a black person come from? Like, I, I, I would love to, like, chain somebody to a chair and it's, make them it goes answer back my questions. To, it goes back to... Why are you afraid teaching, of me? Teaching it when you're a child. Yeah. Like, hey, you're... It's... it's what's that saying? Um, racism isn't... It's not, no, it's it's learned. Yeah. It's learned. You're not born racist. You're, not you're born taught racist. to be. You're taught, yeah. But it's one thing to be racist in a way that you think you're better than someone, right? Because that's how I, I always thought growing up that those people who thought that I was nothing because I was black thought they were better than me because they mm. were white. But it turns out that they're afraid of me because I'm black. Mm -hmm. What about my blackness? scares them other than the fact that I have darker skin like I don't get it but then they turn around and dye their self darker because tanning lotion is not lotion that tans you it's lotion with fucking dye in it yeah. so you can go get spray tanned to look like another race because you almost look like another race when you put that fucking color on but if you're born with a tan you're evil, you're dangerous, like, I don't get it, like, where, where, like, what, how do you rationalize something like that, because, I mean, like, I could be terrified of white people, because I've seen, I've been taught about the things that have happened to people of color throughout history, mm -hmm. so, in a lot of ways, I should be terrified of anyone who has pale skin and blonde hair, mm -hmm. Like, I should be absolutely terrified to be around people that look like that. Because history, history you fucking, yeah, tells right? the tale. But I'm not. I'm not afraid of really dark-skinned people. I'm not afraid of people because of how they look. Well, not how their skin looks. But if you dress like a skinhead, I'm going to stay the fuck away from you. Because I ain't trying to, I'm not trying to have that altercation. Like, I don't want any parts of you. Yeah. And... It's just like, there's been this issue too that I've been thinking about. Is it, is it okay to let someone be a skinhead as long as they're not bothering anybody? But the inherent 
idea behind being a skinhead is to be violent and mean to people who don't look like you, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least I think that that's kind of like where they're, what the whole idea is. It's like, I'm better because I'm white. I don't understand why you got to shave your hair off about it, but. <laughs> they mil it's, it's a way of like, I militarizing themselves is in order uniform? to go like taking up arms against what whatever they I'm feel is. Arms. I'm cutting my hair <laughs> yeah it's like a weird fucking cult That's what, it yeah. is because they start to dress themselves alike they believe in this bullshit rhetoric that they're being fed because they're fucking because they're angry in dire straits yeah, yeah. They're, they're, you're, you're there's poor. These yeah there's these people who fucking don't have anything do you think it's the same idea life. with the with the with the young people who are like eh, it's because of capitalism that people live yeah, in you shitty can holes, cut and shit holes. It. You can is cut it and the same it. idea like oh i'm a red i'm i'm considered a redneck i live in a shack in alabama somewhere and i'm mad because my state doesn't give me Free housing. It's like you, do get, you, you vote for a motherfucker that's gonna that, defund that whatever away you're the trying. Idea. To, yeah, I mean they're mad because they're like, yeah, get rid of it because I don't benefit from it. But you actually do because you're on food stamps. Like it was really funny. It Somebody wrote something like that, yeah. and it was just like, wait a minute. So you had food stamps and Medicaid, but you're mad because you couldn't live in Section Eight housing for free because it's not free by the way no. it's just cheaper yeah it's never free um so you're mad that you couldn't have section 8 housing so because you didn't get a free ride like i've been thinking about that a lot and i'm just like there's like there's this anger from people in what they call flyover states because people in coastal states have forgot about them but then they turn around and vote for somebody who represents new york city and then they also turn around and they're like, all these people want handouts, but it's like statistically... It's, yeah, you guys are the ones who... White people are the ones getting the most money yeah. from government benefit. And then that includes corporations. I mean, one of the biggest places was subsidized. Walmart has been government subsidized. Mm. And it's just like, it's, you know, it's just like, think about it. I think about it like this. You live in a coal mining town. They don't mine for coal anymore. You don't know what to do. You're the offspring of people who worked in the coal mines, and now y'all live in squalor. Why not leave? It's not that. I mean, I understand that it Why is. Why not that leave easy, the though? coal mining time town for something else? I left. I got seven hundred dollars to my name mm -hmm. when I left New York City, and I came out here to L.A. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to have people that wanted to help me get on my feet. Things didn't work out as well as I thought they would. And I mm. kind of fell into some situations. But I picked myself up. I, well, at least I kept myself going. And made sure that I presented myself as a person who was willing to do what they needed to do. And people were willing to help me. Mm. Now, it, because we live in a society... Where you're white, if you're white, you're automatically assumed to be inherently good or helpful or whatever it is. Like, couldn't you do the same thing? Like, couldn't you do the same thing? Couldn't you take a little bit of money, just enough to keep bread in your mouth, right? Mm. Come somewhere that there is industry. And just show yourself to be willing to be a part of society and to do what you need to do. And you might get a job. But the thing is, is that I, I've been thinking about it, and it's like, I don't think it's that. I think it's this thing of, like, there's been this fantasy that at some point in history, if you were white, you were just taken care of. And it was never like that. Yeah. There's always been poor white people with no money, no prospects, and no education. Because it's always been rich versus poor. Mm -hmm. Even in slavery times, the people who managed the slaves were poor. And they worked for the people who owned the plantation. Mm. So, like, I, I don't understand. I, I don't know if it's just, like, a, will, a willful ignorance, if it's the combination of poor education with willful ignorance or whatever it is. But it's just, like, this blind mentality, this blindness of, like, I want to be taken care of because I'm white. I deserve what those people are getting because I'm white. Because white people get everything first. But... Those people worked for it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, 
you didn't go to a four-year college. You didn't even apply to go to the four-year college. You didn't stay in school to get out of high school. So you want, so your non-reading ass is supposed to get a job mm. that requires you to understand complexities that you have to train to com- comprehend. You like you're just supposed to be able to have that. And now we've, and then you have these people being appointed into these government positions, like the new. Uh, oh. Head of well, specifically the woman that's the creationist, creationist that bought it. her job Fuck, as the yeah. head of the Department of Education. So you have somebody like that. She had money, so she married somebody who had money. So she got their family's money, and she used that money to pay for a position in the government. Mm. But somehow that process gets lost when it's translating to the people who voted for the very person that appointed her. And somehow it's, she deserved it because what? Because she's white? Because she's successful? Like, I don't, I, I, I don't get it. I'm just like, I don't understand how you can look at somebody and not contemplate how they got where they are mm-hmm. and just accept that they're there, so therefore they're good. Mm-hmm. It's just like, like we were watching a thing and people were like, they asked people, why are you voting for Donald Trump? They say, oh, because he's successful. And then nobody asked them, how yeah. is he successful? Just like nobody asked Donald Trump, how are you supposed to build a wall? Because they only saw a fucking cartoon character that they saw on TV. Mm-hmm. And they were saying exactly what they were thinking in their yeah. heads. All the stupid hate, all the stupid fear that they fucking were, were a fucking... Um, exposed to when they were little. Yeah, but so, it's just like, what? At what point do you do you start looking at reality for what it is? And then why is it that? Because they were always gonna be blinded to it. Because there's no opportunity. Education's being fuck like gonna even be more you don't defunded. Need a special, these, you don't. Yeah, it's places. like you don't need special opportunities to just read about something. Like if you can get on a conservative website and read some biased <clears throat> bullshit. Or a liberal website, because there's plenty of those that write bias bullshit as well. If you can get on a website, or you can read an article that was posted on Facebook. This, here's the funniest part about the articles on Facebook. Oh, yeah. I really don't think, the people who share them, I don't think they even read the article. No, like, no one does. I don't share, I, I do. I look at it, I'll look at the article, I've gotten to the point where I actually look at it, I I started, I used to be a person who would just share it, because it sounded right, or I read the article and it sounded right, but now even if I read the article, I'll look it up if it sounds kind of weird, because I want to make sure that what's being written about isn't like how this ghost ship article was written, because if I read that lady's article first, Mm. and then I saw all of those posts from people I know, I would have been upset too. Yeah. But I didn't do it like that. Thankfully, I saw that first. Was my friends talking about it and actually pointing out, like, this was a situation that had warnings. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just like, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's just like, is America just a dumpster fire at this point? And should we just leave? It, it, I, I don't <laughs> fucking want to leave. Like, like, I think about it and I'm just like. The way that things are going, the way that these motherfuckers are being appointed into jobs jobs that that they don't deserve yeah that they don't deserve nor have the education or experience to do it's scary it's very scary and then it's like what where do you go you know it's just like where do you go then like i would really like to hear what these idiots are like really saying like the people who voted for trump I want. I would really like to hear what their like fears are because I even saw something online where there was a lady saying, "Oh, she regrets voting for him." Yeah, I saw and that Why the too. fuck did he vote for him then? If you you knew this, you just you just rode the fucking train until the wheels went off. Like yeah, well, it's like that article. It's like that uh, Twitter post with somebody copy and pasted something this guy who was Jewish said, and he was like, "I was willing to support Donald Trump until." He said he didn't want Jewish kids at school with his son. And it's like, and someone said, translation, I was willing to support white supremacy until I found out that the kind of white I am doesn't count. Yeah. That's a paraphrasing of what they said. But I've been saying that for the longest time is all of these people who think, especially, so um, there's this issue 
I'm black, Rick's Hispanic, but there's this issue in the Hispanic community and with some biracial black people or really fair skinned black people, but we'll say half black, half white. Yeah. Where because they have a skin tone that could be mistaken for white if their hair is the right way that day. Mm-hmm. That they can just get away with being shit white. Yeah. that white people do. It's like there's... being a white supremacist. My sister lives um, somewhere. She lives like in Farm Town. Farm Town, yeah. And it's not that far from where we live here. And it's far enough it's, where it's 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 odd. Like yeah. the stuff that happens to her is so odd. You would think we we're in California at at the in L.A. You would think that they people out here would be more like accepting more. No, it's co- completely. No, no, no. I, I've known that since I moved down here. I was like, fuck, people are really so. Out here. There is actually, like like Lisa said, there's people out there who are Mexican, or at least you can hear it in their in their voice at the way that they speak, and they're trying their best to disguise themselves as a white person. Trying to assimilate. And they will literally. Treat other, treat Mexican other Mexican people, especially if their skin tone is darker, like trash, because they believe that they're better. And these are the same people who were Latinos for Trump. They're, yeah. I, honestly, That's in what my I was opinion. Say. I'm like, it's the same idea. It's just yeah. like, oh, if you die, because you have fair skin, you're going to dye your hair blonde and pretend that people can't see that you're not white. Yeah. And... It's like, you think that you're going to be protected under that. And it's like, no, it's just an illusion. But there's a lot of people who, like, I have a friend who is Jewish, and he, you know, it's just like, I don't know where his mind was before. But, like, election night, he was just like, what the fuck are we going to do? What am I going to do? Like, I'm Jewish. These people are crazy. Because he knew, like the rest of us knew, that these people think they're Nazis. They're not actually Nazis. There are. They, but they fucking they, believe the same bullshit on. rhetoric. You can't... Well, I mean, it's like, it's a thing of, like, we don't have proof that they are, like, the Nazis that occupy Germany. But there's, you know, they're neo-Nazis. So we have neo-Nazis trying to take over the government, and nobody... No, not, not trying. They've taken over. And it's well, I'm saying before. Yeah. Before, we had neo-Nazis trying to take over the government, and now they are occupying seats at the top of the government. And, like, his fear is completely legitimate. Another thing that pissed me off during the elections, especially after the results, where where people were like, oh, big deal, what's going to happen? How is this going to affect your life? You should just live your life and don't even worry about what these these people in, in politics do. You're... Probably one of the reasons why shit's going the way that it well, is. Yeah, people who because are you're choosing complacent. to be, yeah, you're trying to be complacent. You're too worried about having a fucking great life or whatever the fuck you're doing. Your and life isn't even that good. Yeah, and your life even probably isn't that good. You just lie to yourself. All I'm saying is, all this could have been avoided. There was fifty percent of the population literally voted. Fifty. A lot of people didn't give a shit. Well. In next four years, you're going to feel why you need to vote, why you need to be informed. But the sad thing Especially is... Especially if you're a fucking minority. The saddest part of it all is, is that I don't feel like they will. I don't feel like the people who should learn their lesson will. Because, you know, it was it's like when Obama was elected... It was like, wow, look at what we can all achieve... If we give a fuck, right? Yeah. And everybody was like, yay, we give a fuck. We did a thing. And then they just got complacent and let... And and it wasn't just complacent. They went and, like... I said this before, and it's just like, maybe we thumbed our nose at conservatives too much. But there's always been an issue with, like, conservatives overstepping their reach. It's just like, yo, worry about yourself. Worry about yourself. You want to be religious and have your religious community and you don't have abortions and you don't have butt sex or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Fine, but there are people who like that shit and it is not your business if they want to do that. Nobody's stopping you from having eight wives with your cripple bullshit. So yeah. why can't you leave my alone? And I, you know, it's just like, how can you, how dare you call a place 
the land of opportunity and then you work hard to try to take other people's opportunity away right so it's just like is it the land of opportunity only if you are blank yeah or is it land of opportunity in general and then it's just like there's also this crazy idea that being religious makes you better than other people because it's like, hello, they're no, following really a specific religion. Following a re- specific religion. Yeah. Well, in my experience, in general, people on, in general who are religious tend to look down on those who aren't. And and then if you're Christian, that that puts you at the top of that mountain. Mm-hmm. And then quite often it's been Muslim second, and then there are a few Jews that I've come across that are like all uppity about being Jewish. Yeah. But that's like an exclusivity thing. It's like I'm a part of a club that you can't be a part of. Especially when they have chosen people. Yeah. Yeah, I like I used to question that when I was living in New York because it's like really obvious because there's this like attitude like, Well, I'm like this and you aren't, so I'm separate from you, therefore I'm better and it's just like I don't know, separatism tends to breed issues mm-hmm. and we see this. So it's just this crazy thing where but- Real quick, back to the house, see what these fucking people are. Like, they believe conspiracy theorists, and I blame I mean, a lot of fucking. I blame Alex Jones for this. He fucking molded, molded this monster, okay. and now this monster is fucking going rampage. There's this thing called PizzaGate. You, oh. you PizzaGate. Apparently, <laughs> yes. Apparently, this this uh, <laughs> pizzeria in Washington was a front for. Uh, child uh, rape whatever cult oh, shit right. I heard about that. and now if this was confirmed to be fake yeah yeah yet all these people online on still Facebook sharing it. still sharing it still believing that it's true to the point that this place has gotten shot up has gotten um, the owner of this of the place 30 it's a minutes real pizza place? 30 minutes after um, let me make oh sure God. I'm talking about I, I heard about it because it was like oh pizza this pizza place isn't real and I was like what is this even about like I didn't even the know. owner of the place 30 minutes after hearing this on the news um, got phone calls like threatening his life like people are are crazy and these are the same people who uh, who voted for this son of a bitch yeah, some of a bitch. Some of a bitch. <laughs> as so fun as it is to if, say it Let like me that. just read this real quick. This is, um... This is the, the specific conspiracy theory. Um... It was a 28-year-old guy in the Washington, D.C. area. He went into the pizza shop, armed with an assault rifle, to investigate right-wing conspiracy theory that Hillary, Hillary Clinton... Runs a child trafficking ring out of a restaurant. Why would she do it like that? Right? As much money and as much pull as Hillary Clinton has. And as many things as she can do. I wish I wish I could pretend to be... I wish I wish I could like... I wish I was really fair skinned and I could just put on a blonde wig and look white. So I could get on YouTube and do the same shit that that Tommy Lauren girl Oh does. my god, that stupid but, bitch. But, but say something like this. Why the fuck would she do something like this? She's got too much money. She could take kids from anywhere. She could just walk up in somebody's house and take somebody's kids if she wanted to. That's how much money she has. But she's going to use a pizza place as a front? A fucking pizza place in Washington, of all places? Like, come on. Like, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like, what was it? I forgot it was something like that. Like, okay, you mad mad that (laughs) Hillary Clinton possibly did this. But I'm, it's okay, but it's okay if people go on sex tourism and fuck kids in, like, Africa and Cuba or wherever they decide yeah, to Thailand fuck kids, right? Or shit. Thailand. Mm-hmm. It's, that's okay. That's okay. Why? Because it's not happening here. Yeah. Like, or, or this, or this. Why haven't any of y'all gone and descended on the motherfuckers that shot up that school? Well, all them little white kids... In December, like, in 2013, wasn't it? Or was it 2012? Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook was, um, it was a, it was a kid. It was a teenager who shot them up. Yeah, but it wasn't, but why didn't nobody go after his family? They, I'm not they, saying they should have. They, they, they believe they did, but, like, honestly, 
that's a whole different thing. That's what? that's that's all a I'm mental just saying, it's just illness like, issue and a gun control issue. No, I'm just saying in the in the way of like if you're so angry, mm-hmm. like was it was it child trafficking or was it because Hillary Clinton's name was attached? Because Hillary Clinton's name was so attached. So you didn't give a fuck that kids were getting abused before. Because you have plenty of churches where people have come out and said that the mm. priest touched them or somebody did something. And it's not just Catholic churches, by the way. Yeah. It's a lot of places that where the, anywhere where adults are allowed to be alone with kids, there is a potential for that shit to go on. So any school, any after school program, any camp, any of that shit, it can happen. Yeah. It's always a possibility. It, it's sure. ignorant to it's think that that won't at your happen. fucking uncle's house. Like, it happens mm. all the time. But people aren't mad about that. But because Hillary Clinton's name was attached, they're mad. But the only people who are mad are the same people, like you said, who voted for Trump. And mm. it's just like, why do you trust this dude so much? He puts his hands on his daughter's hips like he's like she's his lover. He's fucking disgusting. He's a creep. So, it, but that's all right. Why? Cause so, why? Because yeah. he has money? Man, he car- he's a fucking cartoon that character. Because he was on TV, because he's famous. So if Hillary Clinton was on TV pooping in glasses and shit, or whatever it is that Donald Trump has done on TV, if she, she was on fucked TV herself making a over fool either up. way. Like she was, she she had no business trying to run for president. Yeah, the only reason why she ran for president is because she felt like she was supposed to be the first female I mean, president. Isn't that what all people who ran for president are like? Yeah, but she was just. I don't know. I, if there are other, she has too many women skeletons who, in her closet to even try to do this she shit. She has just as many, if not less, skeletons in her closet than a lot of these men that have that been president. That are public? But, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, her shit got put on blast because she's female. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just from my perspective, but people tend to go after women. She did that all on her own. The Benghazi shit happened. Yeah, the Benghazi shit happened on her watch. But guess what? There were more people uh, on that operation than just Hillary Clinton. And this isn't me just defending her Mm -hmm. because she's a woman. But it's also that thing of, like, it's annoying that people bring that up all the time. But nobody talks about how Donald Trump bullied people out of their fucking shit, out of their businesses. People don't talk about how George Bush did fucked up shit or how the Bushes did shit in general. Like, people do not talk about the Bushes. Yeah, like they that. do. Not anymore. Not because like they're, they're not in to. fucking power. You only really talk okay. about the people who are in power who are fucking But the over. point is, is that people are angry about this one person doing stuff, but they refuse to see the house of cards that toppled over that resulted in that shit. Yeah. Like, it wasn't just, like, and it's, like, it's been shown time and time again that there were issues with that stuff where it was just, like, it was left up to a decision, and the decision that was made was that. And because none of us have that job, none of us can fathom making those decisions. Mm. So that's one thing that really drives me crazy. Like, when black people talk about Obama not doing the black community justice, what, was he supposed to give us free handouts? Was he supposed to give us our 40 acres and a mule? Was that what was supposed to happen? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm confused about what black people were expecting him to do. Just come on in and just go straight nigga and just be like, whatever, motherfucker, I'm signing a bill. You're doing it because I said so because I'm obese. Is that what you wanted? Mm-hmm. Because that would have gotten him impeached. Yeah. So it's just like, I, I don't get it. It's like with the thing. Yeah, um, I mean, in a way, they kind of just elected a guy who basically might just do that. Yeah, but the and point is, fucked up way. so there's this issue that I have always had growing up, where it's just like, as a black person, being constantly painted as violent, uneducated, poor-tempered, all of this stuff, being always painted in a way, you have to act contrary to prove your opposers wrong. When you're the president and you're a black man... And the thing is, it's not, he's half black. He's half black and half white, but people refuse to see that and they just see him as a black man. But either way, when you're a person who people see you as black and they think black is bad, black is violent, black is angry, all of this stuff, what do you expect from him when he's faced with these issues? You want him to just come out the gate straight gorilla and just knock that shit out? Or do you want him to help handle it dignif- dignified? improperly Mm. do you want him to follow due process like he's supposed to do you want him to follow the process of how our laws was set up so things can happen right so they can stay like that or do you want him to just sign it over and just push push the push the glass over the edge 
and let it crash on the ground and just let the pieces fall where they may. Because that's what Donald Trump is doing. Mm -hmm. And he will go down in history as a fucker, as a fuckhead who fucked up everything. Mm -hmm. If Obama had done that, that's what his legacy would be. So the thing is, is just like complaining about stuff he didn't do when there's so much that did happen, when there's so much good that did happen. It's just like, our country had to be pulled up out of a fucking hole because of what happened after September 11th. Mm. Because all kinds of irresponsible decisions were made off of emotion. And these are people who take the job and get sworn into these positions saying, I will not let my personal beliefs and emotions affect my decisions for millions of people. And they did anyway. Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody who comes in and does it the right way, everybody's like, oh, he's pussyfooting and all of this stuff. And it's just like, you know what? Go get a job where you're responsible for multiple people and let me know. Matter of fact, it's just like, I love the question of people who are parents and ask them, so you mean to tell me that when your kid was having this issue and you handled it delicately, like, were you pussyfooting around or were you handling it so you didn't fucking scar them for life? Mm. You know? It's like, it's, it's like, it's like, give, it's like faulting parents for not fucking when their kids are awake. Mm. It's like, well, you wanted to have sex. Why don't you just have sex? Oh, maybe because my kids might need me. And if they walk in on me and see mommy and daddy fucking, they might fuck up their head for the rest of their life. Yeah. Because some people, that shit will do that. Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's, there is appropriate behavior here and there. And when you go places and when you're at the top of government, you got to follow the rules. You can't just be stomping around and punching people in the face just because you feel like it today. Or at least not in the spotlight. And it's, it is. it is. It's just like, uh, that's why I get mad when people say, I'm a mom. I do the hardest job in the world. And it's just like, okay, try being president. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that, how that works out. Oh, Mrs. Mom. And I'm not saying, like, being a mother isn't hard. But, like, calling your job the hardest job in the world ain't, is bullshit. Like, and in a lot of ways, I would think that it it would be easier to be a mom than do a lot of the things that people aspire to do. So it's like, oh, you're a mom. Try being a firefighter. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what or what's gonna happen in the next four years. I'm I'm not even sure if I if I want to even stay in the United States to I mean, find out. But at the same time, it's not like travel. I don't have. This is the perfect opportunity yeah. to travel. But at the same time, you know, gotta work. You gotta pay the bills. You gotta do the you thing. Gotta take care of yourself to stay alive. Do the damn thing. It ain't even just that. It's just like wherever we go, we got to stay alive. That's yeah. the whole idea. It's like you got to stay alive. And I, I feel like at this point, you know, it's just like people people who follow these conspiracy theories and they're like, they're going to take away our guns or they this, they that. And it's just like you just elected in the people who are going to do that very thing. And I've been thinking about a lot of the conspiracy theory stuff that I saw being pushed around about four four to eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And the stuff came, it was like self-fulfilling prophecies. But it wasn't because that's just what was happening. It's because that's what people, they believed it would happen, so they created an avenue for it to happen. Yeah. It was almost like, oh, it's inevitable. We may as well carve a path for it. It's like the, the, village, the village will get destroyed by a volcano. Well, since we're going to get destroyed by a volcano, we may as well just continue to live here. So I don't know. I just... Everything's it's, fine. It's that it's that one picture. Yeah, it's a yeah. picture of a dog sitting in the burning room. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, I'm a, I'm a use Meanwhile, that <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it just, I don't know. People are crazy, and it's not just white people. But there are a lot of old, <laughs> there are a lot of old dummies from a generation past that thought that by now they would have their castle and be able to live this life that they lived that they saw on TV, and they can't. And um, I fault people letting their family be stupid. I fault I fault those people. It's like you got a dumbass uncle, and he done got married to a dumbass bitch, and they about to have kids. You need to put a fucking stop on that shit. Stop him from breeding. How? <laughs> How do you stop people from doing that? Sneak some birth control into that bitch's drink. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just I'm just I'm exact. I'm being yeah. ridiculous. 
But um, but so, seriously, it's just like it's that thing of like allowing people around you that you care about to be stupid, and it's not you don't do it by sharing articles on Facebook or anything like that. But it's like when they when they open their mouth and say stuff, and you go, oh grandma or oh Aunt Betty or oh cousin whatever, that's mm. not right, and not say bitch that's fucked up. But even if you say that, people will always be like, no, well, I'm right, you're wrong. Yeah. And, those people and that's are... that's where we are today. Yeah. People who just want to be we right. Have to, we have to figure out a middle ground, but I yeah. highly doubt that's ever going to happen. I don't know. It's just like, it, it, it kind of, like, these times make me feel like the idea that we were going to become a multicultural society... Not free of problems, but the thing of, like, as time progressed on, I thought, as time progresses on, people will become more and more accepting. And you'll have more people with blended families and different walks of life coming together. And people will find their place that they feel like they belong. And if you have serious issues with how somebody looks or something like that, it's going to get to the point where you won't have a community. Yeah. That'll shelter you. And it did go there. But instead those people just all moved together. Where the community rejected and was like, yeah, we're not dealing with that shit. Go away. It's and they crazy. all found each other because of fucking Facebook. And people were like, we live in the best time. Everybody can get together on the internet. And people forgot that hateful people can get together on the internet too. <laughs> yeah, and they silently fucking took over. And then it and it is mm-hmm. and it's that thing of like freedom of speech. So it's like it's just oh yeah, just, that's another thing that's just, gonna be just the doom taken of, away. Well, no, no, I'm not worried about. You no, know, you can't take away freedom of speech because um, people can the, still talk. Until you can stop people from speaking, mm-hmm. you can't take away freedom of speech. That's just that's just my point. But um, what I'm saying is like in a country, in what we call a free country, and in a democracy, you can't control what people do to a certain extent so it's just like you have the internet and it's open to everyone Mm -hmm. that means everyone so pedophiles racists rapists racists all of that stuff Mm -hmm. so i said racist already (laughs) raisins craisins raisins oranges lies lies (laughs) well the point is everyone is allowed to in this in and in our the 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 thing says the pursuit of happiness Mm -hmm. life liberty and the pursuit of happiness if hating black people makes you happy that's what you're free to do here but you're not allowed to go hurt a person Mm -hmm. because you hate them and that's where we're at which is like how do you get it across to people that yeah you can not like them but Mm. just leave you don't like your neighbor, don't talk to them. You don't want to see them go inside your house. But you're not allowed to cross your property line, go into their space, and bother them. But like, when, it, we have, like, I just feel like we have to get there. That type of shit just brews violent tendencies. We have, to, we have right? to get to that point where it's just like, yeah, you're allowed to not like that guy, but you, you can't do anything to him. And he can't do anything to you. So don't engage him. Like... But it's just like at some point, like, it's almost like is that the fault of our society? The idea, like, oh, we're gonna have a free country and we're gonna do, you know, you can do what you want, but we have these rules so everybody can exist freely. And is that like the is that the fault with having a free society? Everyone's free to do what they want. Therefore, people are free to be hateful and people are free to be, to come together in clusters of hate groups. And it's just frustrating. And it also, it also makes me angry too, because it makes me feel like, not that I'm not safe, because I never felt safe around people just because they look like me or didn't look like me. Because I have learned from early age that even someone who's supposed to be responsible for you could hurt you. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, it's just like that. How do you, 
how do you live in a world like this without being on guard all the time or without reacting without militarizing without becoming like the people that you're like these people are garbage yeah how do you how do you function that way like in the 60s and we had black militants it was necessary because people were getting murdered just like right now and it's just like do we turn back to being like that do we put together militias of brown and black people or do we function in a, the right way but when due process is no longer a thing and you're locking people in cages for protesting a pipeline or you're killing people for driving their own vehicle and trying to show you their license mm-hmm. like how what are we supposed to do like i'm i'm just really confused and lost right now because i feel I'm just like, like I don't, there's there needs to be an accountability thing when it comes to police well, the the thing is, is that we're we're moving into an age of having government that doesn't give a fuck about that. No, I know that. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's just like, what do you do as an individual who's comp- who's always been vulnerable to the whim of what the upper class wants, and now that we're moving into a place where everyone is, mm-hmm. and if you're any shade darker than what is favored, you're you're highly vulnerable. What mm-hmm. do you do? Where do you go? Yeah. How do you help yourself survive without being treated like, without becoming part of the help for people like this? Because that's the thing that people need to focus on, avoiding and creating systems so we don't, so people of color do not become a minority Mm -hmm. first because we're not really minorities anymore. Like, as a, as a whole, mm. brown people are not minorities in this country. And these election results are coming out, and state by state is showing that Hillary Clinton's votes are way higher than what people say, what people thought it was. And people keep saying the, because a headline said it, people keep saying it. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes Hillary Clinton. Bullshit. Bullshit. I mean, I, I don't like Hillary Clinton. I just had I to mean, vote for her. I mean, I don't her. know, Ras. I probably wouldn't like her in real life either because um, in my my encounters with women in higher positions of power, just in companies, they're usually horrible people. But she gets the fucking job done. She does her shit. Yeah, and, she, sh- and, and she's not trying to pull people's rights out for her own personal benefit in, in the way that these other people are doing. Like, it's not a race-based thing. Yeah, it's it would have been a different. It would have been I'm a different one. I'm not saying that I want just, somebody like yeah. that, but something people need to realize is that this country was not built on, like, what is it called when people just want to be good just for, for a the trade non organic? I mean, yeah, it wasn't for a trade non GMO. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Like, people want to think, like, the founding fathers were just, like, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, no. Money was important back then, too. And money has always been important because money buys you certain things. You cannot function in a world where you have millionaires in other countries ruling things and be, you know, Mr. Minimum Wage trying to run shit. Yeah. It doesn't work. And it's just, like, yeah, you can get the money out of government in a way of, like, companies are no longer able to bribe people. And if it's found out that they bribed somebody, all y'all bitches going to jail. Yeah. We could go there, but a lot of shit will get shut down. You think it's going to be bad with these motherfuckers running stuff? Wait till they start putting these motherfuckers in jail. Hmm. If they start putting these people in jail, you about to find some hungry-ass motherfuckers in this country. Because... In the same way stuff is getting fucked up by people buying things, stuff is getting done because people are buying motherfuckers out. Yeah. Like, you really think if a rich dude buys a plot of land that has a lake that people drink from, he's not going to put up a fence so you can't drink from the fucking lake? Oh, man. You know, like... I the, feel... I really hope that... I don't know. I I do, I do really hope that these four mm-hmm. years, there's nothing too horrible that happens. There's, mm-hmm. there's no like attack that happens in the United States now that this motherfucker's in. Mm-hmm. But um, now that this, I, I'm not even afraid of like another country attacking us. I'm more afraid that 
there'll be people that I won't be able to go to work or go to the store to buy food because there's fucking militias of white people trying to kill me because I exist. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm more afraid of that. And then I also think of it, but sometimes I think of it like, have we been just asking for it? Has it been slowly coming? We we have a military base on on every continent, in every country almost. Well, I mean, it goes back to that. And like, not all empires last forever. No, I mean, but this one is like one of the shortest runs. It was a bright, it was a hot, bright star, and mm-hmm. it burned out quick. What, what if, you know what? What, what if we're, what if we're wrong? <laughs> I'm gonna be. That'll be. I'm gonna make a stupid argument. I'm just throwing it out there just to be funny. But that'd be so fucking hilarious if this motherfucker pulls it off. Pulls what off? Like actually succeeds in being a president. I mean, given all like, the shit oh. that he's doing now, oh, and all the works, steps, if it all works, somehow works out. works out, but it won't. It's not gonna work out. People, yeah, because you you look it's, around. It's it's gonna like, it's gonna be fucking horrible. No, they're gonna tank it, and and we're gonna have another depression like it was. That's why I said, oh, this is the perfect time to travel because as soon as basically we'll have our shit ready. That way, when shit goes down, it just bounce and be like, well, time to go and. I mean, I think about it like this. Like, I have family members that I'm and friends, and I'm like, what do I tell them? How do I convince them, like, hey, if you can, buy a passport and go somewhere. Just go somewhere. But that's the thing. Just get the fuck Eventually, out of here. You can't, once you go somewhere, you can't stay there. No, you can't. But the like, thing... You, even if you try to do it, like, illegally, like, like how people sometimes do it here. Like, they come from other countries, and yeah. they just stay here. Like, eventually, you'll get caught, and you'll be sent back here. So, it it's... I don't know. I think... I mean, it's the same thing. That's why I was like, oh, this is a good time to travel. And travel doesn't mean, like, oh, you jet set in, you hopping in a plane, you fly into Amsterdam, and you fly... I mean, around. it's also easy to say, oh, yeah, let's just travel. Not, not all people have the opportunity to No, that's why I said, I, when I say traveling, I mean, like... Oh, we pick a country where there's we pick a place where there's where they have a system of transportation where you can actually get around. Like how people, um, when I was coming out of college, people were like Lisa, you should backpack through Europe. It's fucking awesome. And I'm like backpack. That sounds like that. That sounds like uh, not my thing. Sounds like but being homeless in a European country. Sounds like country. being home. Yeah. Sounds like <laughs> yeah. This is it also sounds like, what it is. But it's like if. If it gets to the point where you have no choice but to be homeless in your own country, what's the difference? Yeah. But, I, I don't know. I, 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 I feel have to like... go to Africa, <laughs> Rick. Fuck it. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, no. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you go. It's always something. Okay. So, yeah. What's the moral of this story? Of this podcast story, Lisa? What's the moral? We're fucked. We're fucked. And fucked, get your ducks in a row. Try you, to get your ducks in a row if you can. If you're, if you don't have, if you don't have money like that, if you're not what we could perceive as to be rich, you're fucked because you can't just make a decision to go where you want to go. Everything costs money, and and everything, or it takes time. And even getting a passport right now, it's gonna take time. Yeah, it I'm takes sure time. Everybody and mama trying to get a passport because I want to get mine, but fuck. Where, where, and then even when I get it, where am I go? Up to Canada? I mean, I guess I could go to Canada and backpack around in the spring, but once it gets cold, you're fucked. Mm. If you don't have a residence. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. All we can do is just, uh... Hope for the best. Hope for the best. And I mean, like... Try to get our shit people together. People want to talk about California seceding, and I mean, sometimes it sounds like a great idea. I have a feeling it's, it's never going to happen. Idea. No, because we'll just get attacked. No, like, and not just that, but the only way I can see this happening is if California secedes and then accepts the offer of Canada because they gave us an offer to join them. An offer. <laughs> an offer. <laughs> yeah, did you hear about that? Yeah, How Canada gave it. us an offer to join Canada? Yeah, I heard about That'd it. That'd be fucking cool. True, but... I'd be Canadian. <laughs> I mean, I thought about going moving to Canada when I left college and 
you know, it's just like I was thinking, oh, I'll try to get a job for a design company that's up there. And People out here already saying, hey. Give me, shut up. On that note, fuck it. Oh, we're God, we're, we're all fucked. fucked. We're all going to die in a giant fire of hatred and racism. And it was nice knowing you. It's been uh, it's been it's been real. Yeah. It's been okay, but I personally have had the worst back end of 2016, and I'm capping it off by putting my dog down. So this is going out to him, Apollo. Shout out to Apollo, homie. It's been real. You've always been my good boy. All right. So this is Rook. This is Lisa, Lisa aka Booty Lee. Don't say my name for me. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. So your nickname. This is Lisa, as Rick calls me, Booty Lee. You called yourself that. Why? How did that even happen? You came up with... You were Booty. just roughing. Okay, you're my roughing, name you're like, my oh. name, my, my shop name, my sales name, or alias, or whatever you want to call it, is Ludic Lee. And one day I said it all funny, and it turned out as Booty Lee. So this is Booty Lee signing off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was doing. Oh, one more game. One, One more time. <laughs> oh, this is Rick. And this, this is Lisa. Saying, do what you want. Be happy. Unless you what guys. you want is to hurt me. And then we got to You can go fuck yourself. Bye. Bye. <laughs>